Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a man who became a chef after struggling for 20 years to figure out what he really wanted to be when he grew up. His latest book is Between the Buns. We welcome Sam the Cooking Guy, Sam Zion. Good morning. How are you? Absolutely great, Sam. Let's go beyond the mic. How do you go from biotech to travel to burgers? It doesn't make sense in your head. Completely makes sense. <laughs> uh, look, I was I was uh, miserable at what I did. I was a biotech guy, and um, I've said this many times since then. It doesn't matter what you do, but if you don't like it, uh, what's the point? Life is very short. We've all found ourselves at times doing things that, to pay the bills. We all need to work. There's no getting away from that. Most of us, I'm sure there's a couple that don't have to, but we don't talk about that. This is something that we need to do, but you need to be happy at it, right? Exactly. Why spend eight hours a day? What, 30% of your life, essentially, doing something that you hate. So I said to myself, what do I want to do? I had an idea about starting a travel show. So I stupidly, foolishly quit my biotech job to try and do this. And uh, before I got a chance to go shoot anything, 9-11 happened, changed a lot of people's lives much more significantly than it changed mine. But it still changed my life because I was not, I was not doing anything with travel in the days following 9-11. So I sat at home watching TV, my wife asking me, honey, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know, but I'll figure it out. And literally the week following 9-11, I saw a terrible cooking segment on a local channel in San Diego, a chef that could probably kick my ass all over a kitchen. But it was so boring. I just, I cannot tell you how dull it was. And I said, God, somebody should do that better. And then I went, wait a minute. I've got nothing to do. I quit my job. I'll try and do it better. So I started a, uh, a cooking. Oh, I made a cooking demo and I sent it out to a couple stations. And one of them put me on because I was different. I think I was refreshing. I wasn't a chef. And that was one of the benefits one of the pluses I had on my side. Your goal is not to make anything complicated, but something that we can all make. Why was helping people see food the way you enjoy it, the way you cook it, entertaining? Listen, so that, that chef's uh, a butternut squash soup that day in September of 2001, he made it about as complicated as it could be. And I was watching this and I thought, you know, people are watching this and they're going to say, okay, well, that soup looks good. I'd never make it because I couldn't make it. I need to be a chef to make it. So let's go out to eat. I didn't have a restaurant that I was trying to promote that. So I thought, what if people watched that same butternut squash soup being made? But instead of saying, let's go out to eat, they went, let's try and make that because that guy's making it look simple. And the fact that I wasn't a chef, hadn't gone to culinary school, meant that I didn't have chef terminology or technique that I was prone to use. So anything that I did, I was just a regular guy. And people watch now and they come up, and they go, You've encouraged me to cook. You make it look simple. I go, it is simple. You just don't think it is because you're watching other people make the stuff look complicated. Which recipe in between the bun should be the first one that people tackle? Okay. If you don't cook, uh, geez, let me think. Oh, what would I make? Um, uh, what would I make? God, you pushed me on this. I should have had this prepared in my head. Uh, I'm going to say you should make the carne asada that is in my book. Because it's just a handful of ingredients. You buy some skirt steak, you put it in a Ziploc bag, a handful of ingredients go in, you give it a few hours to marinate. Skirt steak is one of those things that cooks like that. You get three minutes aside and it's done. And then once you've got that carne asada made, and look, I'm from San Diego. There's a significant Mexican uh, community there, amazing food. And we put carne sod in everything. And you could make a sandwich out of it. You make a taco out of it. You make a burrito out of it. In the book, the section of burritos uses the carne sod. The tacos uses the carne sod. But once you've got that down, you've got something you can use a whole bunch of different ways. And I think it's a, it's a combination of simple ingredients. It cooks simply. But the taste results on the other side are so fantastic. You'll have confidence with one recipe. And that's what a lot of us need. People say they can't cook. I go, no, it's that you don't cook. Sam, it's time for the Rocky Nate. Eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There's no pressure. Here we go. Rate these proteins from you like the most to least liked. Beef, fish, pork, seafood. Beef, fish. Uh, oh, so for me, I'm going to go beef, uh, seafood, pork, fish. Uh, yeah. 
fish. Would you raise chickens for the fresh eggs? 100%. Uh, one of my boys does, has four chickens. Here's a trick question. Which one, Haley, Lewis, or Summer, is your favorite? Mm. You can't do that to me. <laughs> I can go with Haley. Have to ask you about the dogs. That's funny. How many scars do you have? Uh, I have uh, three. Who's your favorite Iron Chef? Morimoto. Do you have a favorite dessert? Mm, not really a dessert guy. Uh, churros. What was the first cookbook you ever read? Uh, uh, probably Julia Child, Dirt French Cooking. If you had to choose your favorite restaurant in San Diego that you don't own, yeah. which one is it? Uh, it's going to be Nico's Taco Shop right by my house. I'm assuming uh, the breakfast burritos are chorizo burrito. By the way, there's a chorizo burrito. My favorite burrito in the world in the cookbook. That would be my place to go. Yeah. We don't like fancy food. We like great tasting food. How has your wife, Kelly, and your family helped you on this path to gastronomical success? You know, n- nobody does anything alone. We don't work in a vacuum. And um, the day I told my wife, Kelly, that I wanted to quit uh, what I was doing, she was 100% behind me. And not because she thought I'd be successful at the travel show or cooking, but because she knew how miserable I was and I needed to change my life significantly. And I don't know that I would have done it without her support behind me. It's time for one big question with author of Between the Bun, Sam the Cooking Guy, Sam Zion, be on the mic. Sam, how has your family embraced the life you've created and the fans you've discovered? Millions of fans, millions of subscribers. It's part of their life now. It is part of their life. You know, it it casts everybody into a much more public world. Uh, We had a uh, book launch party a week ago for Sam the Cooking Guy Between the Binds at one of the restaurants in San Diego, uh, one of our restaurants in San Diego. And uh, two of my kids, two of my boys were there. And my wife was there. And I'm telling you, they are as popular as uh, at me. People want to come up. They see them occasionally and they want to talk to them. They were signing the cookbooks along with me signing the cookbooks, but they're all so supportive of it. And they love the, they love the food world. They love to eat. Everybody loves it. And fortunately, I've, uh, I'm part of a, a restaurant group that has food that uh, they all like. It'd be one thing if I had restaurants, they didn't give a crap about the food. But the talk, not not tacos and, and Samburgers and Grays, uh, some of their favorite food. And we'll say, let's, we'll, you know, let's plan to go for dinner. Where do you want to go? And when your own family suggests your own restaurants, that makes you, it has to make you feel good, right? Sam Zion's favorite Iron Chef is Morimoto, wants you to cook carne asada and has three scars. His latest book is Between the Buns, Burgers, Sandwiches, Tacos, Hot Dogs, and more. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Thanks for the time. Happy to be here. And that, my friends, is a Beyond the Mic Shortcut.